Okay, we're live. <laughs> Leanne, welcome to the show. It's wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much, Casey. It's a pleasure to be here. So many topics to talk about. I know we've already spoken many times before about manifestation, the law of attraction, but I'd love to hear when was this starting point for you? When did you enter this universe? Oh, good question. I think probably mid twenties, I felt very lost in my life. I'd done so many different career paths, didn't really feel fulfilled in my life. Um, didn't think I was really living my life on purpose. And I, I guess really I began a bit of a search. And one of my mentors at the time, I was actually retraining to be a personal trainer again. And it was very strange because I, I didn't know him well at the time, but I just felt that he had answers. And I just intuitively felt I need to ask this guy please give me more information. I feel like you you know more information about the average person. Cut a very long story short, he introduced me to The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And I suppose really that introduced me to the beginning of personal development, um, how we really, that thoughts become things. And that's the summary, I suppose, of the book. And I highly recommend it to anyone that's listening to this or watching it. If you've never read the book or listened to it, it really it's a very short book. Um, and ultimately it, it is, it's saying that we become what we think about. And then I suddenly realized, wow, all the negative things that I manifested in my life, it, it was me doing it, you know, everything from rushing to work and I'd come across red traffic lights. And, you know, when you just feel like you're going upstream in life and that life is against you, that's how my life felt for many years. So it, I guess it all started from there. How did this book by Old Nightingale help you to reframe your life and your struggles? What were some of the questions and the realizations you had when you read it? I think I'd always felt that one of my beliefs I noticed was that life was life is always hard, life is always uphill, and you have to work hard to get anything that you really want in life. And everything's always going to be a struggle. And I realized that that program kind of came from a younger age where my parents separated. And my I, I think I saw my mum always struggle quite a bit, you know, financially and just in some relationships, things like that. And I, I guess I had that belief of life's always going to be hard or you can't always rely on men. Not talking about my father, but, you know, just in general, the relationships that I saw, not not just from family, but from friends growing up that, you know, you've always got to be independent and women have to do everything by themselves because you can't rely, you know. So I started to think, my goodness, this is how I've attracted certain people in my life, certain situations. Um, so I really had to strip back everything, clear the forest, <laughs> so to speak, or really just start trailblazing. And then I think I just started studying. The more I studied on a daily basis and was consistent, the more I was learning. And just I think you just have to untangle everything and, and start from the beginning almost. What were some of the changes that you saw when you started to apply this different mindset after you realized that your thoughts become things, that, that what you manifest in your life is based on your beliefs and your perceptions? What are some of the changes that you saw in your life? The first thing is I started to play around with it because I think in the beginning I always knew there was more information out in the world than what we're taught at school, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I suppose I always felt like the black sheep in the family or amongst friends. I was always fairly intuitive, but and didn't realize I was actually trying to follow my path. I was never settling for any of the jobs and on the outside. Friends and family thought, oh, Leanne's always switching jobs. But I know that my inner system or guidance system was always trying to find something uh, that, that was meaningful to me, you know, discovering my purpose. So I think I was trying to get to the right path, but I, I couldn't see how. But again, the more information and knowledge I was gaining from studying, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, reading books, going to seminars, doing courses, the more it made sense. And I think from a science point of view as well, you understand it more, then you believe it more, then you start applying. So I guess I started with small things like, OK, let me see if I can manifest a coffee today. <laughs> Or I'm going to get a parking spot because my belief before would always be, oh, it's always hard to get a parking spot. Shopping takes so long. So I started with small changes that were believable because I think back then, if, if someone had have said to me, oh, try and manifest an extra thousand pounds in a day, I probably would have, you know, I didn't believe it enough. 
So I just started applying small things. And then you kind of end up with this bucket of evidence. <laughs> and then you can move on to bigger things. What were some of the bigger things you managed to manifest in your life? I was always a Michael Jackson fan. And I saw, it was online somewhere, that one of his main choreographers and head or lead dancers was doing a workshop in, I think it was in Germany at the time. This is going back a long time and I was flying with British Airways as cabin crew. And I thought, I saw the advert and I thought, I'm going. I thought, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to get there. It was in three days time. I didn't have the money at the time. I was supposed to be working, which was even worse. <laughs> but I, I found a way of getting there. Off I went to this workshop. Now, about an hour before the workshop, I sat down. This is going to sound crazy, but I'd been learning about manifestation. And I started to write a letter to this choreographer. His name was Lavelle Smith Jr. And I wrote a letter basically saying, hi, I'm Leanne. You don't know me. And I know this is going to sound a little bit bizarre, but I'd love to be able to work with you in the future. Because at the time also, I started to do dance workshops. Um, I started to build up an entertainment business alongside flying. And I thought, somehow, I really want to be able to work with Lavelle and do a dance workshop or just do something. That's what I really felt that I would be doing in the future. But there was a part of me saying, just burn the Leslie Ann. This, this is going to sound stupid. He's going to think you're crazy, you know. Oh, so I finished the letter, <laughs> finished my coffee. Off I go to this incredible workshop where we were learning, you know, the famous dance routine to beat it that you see on, you know, that used to be on MTV and um, parts of... I think it was smooth criminal had the best time ever and at the end it was so busy that he was trying to speak to everyone so it, we didn't have much time but i had a chance just to say thank you so much it was a real honor to be here and i remember as a kid watching on tv my mum's do you remember the old vhs tapes she had the bad tour the dangerous tour we'd watch for hours as i was a kid growing up all of these amazing concerts that michael was doing and Lavelle was in the background and all of them dancing. So it was just so surreal to be there. So anyway, I handed him this letter and I thought, just do it. Doesn't matter what he thinks. Um, just do it and have faith in what you you're learning and it's going to be more evidence. Well, about a year, maybe it was two years. It was quite a while after, but about two years later. So I pretty much forgotten about the whole experience, but it was I guess it was in the back of my mind still that one day it's going to happen. Didn't really put a date in mind. I had a random phone call just out of nowhere of it was from the guy that had originally put together this workshop in Germany. And uh, he said, Leanne, you were at my workshop uh, with Lavelle. And I said, yes. How can I help? Would you like to do two dance workshops with Lavelle in London in it was like three months time? <laughs> Oh my goodness, I nearly fell off my chair at the time and I thought, oh my, so first of all, the panic set in. It was excitement, but panic. The excitement was, I knew it was going to happen. This is crazy. I know this works, but the panic was, how am I going to afford this? Because it was, it was, it, it was a fair amount of money, as you can imagine. Um, how am I going to advertise it? I have no experience building websites, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, yes, I think it took me three seconds just to say yes, despite the fear. So that one will always stick in my mind. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And it's so, I don't know, it brings tears to my eyes. It's so magical sometimes how things work. And obviously for some people who are a little more spiritually inclined, they might think of the universe conspiring to make it happen. But other people might also hear in what you're saying, the clarity of what you really wanted, the perseverance. Also the patience, it's not happening necessarily in that timeline that you wanted. And the belief, you believing it could be possible, enough for you to at least do the letter, write the letter and then give it to him. So there's a lot of really strong skills here that have an impact on the results that you're getting. Amazing. So if we look at everything you've learned in this journey, like you said, you went to a lot of courses and seminars. I know you also did Bob Proctor's work. How do you then support the people you're working with, your clients, to get the results they want in their life? What are some of the tools that they use to manifest the life of their dreams or simply put to get to the goals they want? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
I think um, obviously everyone is different. Everyone's on their own personal journey. Everyone's at certain levels. Some people are at the very beginning. Some people you meet and they don't even really know exactly what they want, but they know that they're not happy where they are. And that can be a, just a discovery process in itself. So it can be quite literally just asking them the right questions because I very much believe we all have the right answers inside of us. It's just often, if you think about it, we're so used to asking other people of their opinions from when we're a kid, teenager, we grow up into early adulthood, we often ask, in fact, the wrong people. <laughs> we go to certain friends for financial advice or you know, advice on a certain course when they're actually broke themselves or they've never done coursework themselves. And I think we're in this habit of asking the wrong people sometimes. So what I find is with some clients, it is just uh, to helping them really get on their path of what it is that they really desire what are their you know what makes them happy what lights them up what are they good at and really being able to just paint a beautiful picture of their life and I think we're not taught how to do that in schools so this is where the imagination comes in as you know so it's just being able to paint that beautiful picture for them that they're emotionally involved with enough for them to then start taking the action um, and then you've got other clients that are fairly let's say a little bit more down the journey of they know what they want it might just be that they're struggling with I don't know uh, I don't believe in a time issue but let's say an act activity management challenge I call it so it could be just a case of they need a bit of accountability um, it could be they need help with I think quite a popular one I find is confidence um, really believing in themselves you know and I think we've all had that where Anytime we go for something bigger and better than what we've achieved before, which we should do, because otherwise there's no growth in it. <laughs> Again, it's that it's the it's kind of like a bungee cord pulling, like when I had with the Lavelle Smith workshops, the dance workshops. Part of me was super excited for this goal, but the other part of me was terrified and the self-doubt was coming in. And I think it's having someone there sometimes to believe in you when you don't always believe in yourself at least until you see the own light <laughs> upon you, it sometimes takes for someone else to see that light. So it's it really depends on the person, what they're going for. But yeah, I think they're the main things, confidence, self-image, building up a, this winning self-image. Often we we view ourselves of this as this failure or but you know from past failures or as this person of how other people have seen us in the past that's not really, you know, given us much confidence. Habits, that's another thing. I think being disciplined and creating new habits, that's something we all need to apply and to create success habits. And, you know, it's just one at a time, not trying to get everything together at once. Otherwise, we're almost setting ourselves up for failure, you know, but just one thing at a time, even if it's okay from this month, I'm going to start an hour earlier and that one hour earlier could be the result of a new best-selling book that you complete in two months time. Yes, it's a combination of building those habits and also, like you said, that confidence. And I love what you said about it's important to aim for bigger goals because that's how you grow. But equally, those are the moments where you'll have the most self-doubt, especially if at the beginning you don't see the results. So when you're working with people who maybe lack that self-confidence or that self-belief? How do you help them to believe in themselves, to believe it's possible, even when they're not seeing the outcomes that they want? Mm -hmm. Again, this can, uh, the tools, resources, and the advice that you give certain clients, I think can vary massively. Um, there are so many different strategies that I like to use, but one of my favorites I would say is, I think, you know, it came from, the, this book is almost falling apart, but I think because it changed my life so much. This is um, Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. I know that we've spoken about this before. And again, this is all about really embodying your best self. So it's saying that we have an inner and an outer image. And it's saying that we can't ever exceed the result in our life to how we view ourselves. So if we still feel like we're a failure from the past or we're not a successful person, our results are never going to go past that. So I think a really good exercise to do is to write out, and I think there's some things quite magical about writing, not just thinking about it, which is also good, but physically writing out how you see yourself now that you are this you know, spectacular 
winning, successful, ambitious, wonderful person that you are now that you've achieved this goal, but you know, in detail, how are you showing up? What time are you getting up in the morning? What are you wearing? Are you dressing as a successful multimillionaire that you want to be? That's just a monetary example. It could be something else. It could be, you know, a mother of five children that's doing an amazing job. If that's your goal, everyone's goals are different. Um, it could be that you want to be the world's top athlete, but then how many times a week are you training? <laughs> what are we eating? Um, are you going for a haircut once a year because you think that's all you can afford? Or So it's a case of not necessarily spending money you don't have, but I think thinking about how would you show up in the world, imagining that it's your future self. So the person that you want to become as you achieve this certain goal that's important in your life, it could be just, you know, buying a beautiful five bedroom house in the countryside. But we have to almost embody that person right now, because that propels us into the action that we need to take in order to get the results. So writing that out is so powerful. And then I always ask my clients to pop it on audio because I think there's even more energy in that as well. So if they were to read it out loud, and I always say you've got to do it in a really good energy when you feel good and you're believing in yourself, because it's the power of, you know, even the vibrations of voice, um, of the sound. Record it, listen to it as much as you can, whether it's driving to work whilst you're ironing clothes or especially last thing at night, obviously, I think it's very powerful. First thing in the morning, and it's just the repetition of, and that helps. It's repetition is the first law of learning is what Bob Proctor always used to say. It's just embedding a new belief, a new belief that, you know, you are that winning person, you can do it. Yes, and there's something so incredibly powerful about that visualization of who you want to become and what you want your life to be like. And I feel the most of the time when we do this, unless we've learned the sort of tools you're talking about, most of the time when we do this, it's from a place of lack. It's from a place of, oh, I wish I could only have that house, that job, that income. And from that place, of course, you're not embodying the person that you need to become to get it and therefore you don't reach it so there's this paradox sometimes the more you want this thing or whatever it is again outcome partner health losing weight uh, being great mom whatever it is the more you cling to it and you desperate for it the less likely you are to have it because mm -hmm. the more you're feeling the gap between who you are and who you want to become or what you want to achieve or have in your life and paradoxically, it's when you're able to be okay with where you're at now and at the same time embody this new identity, embody these new thoughts and emotions, that then you get there. And what I found is really interesting, and I'm sure you've had very similar experience, Leanne, is that when we're able to do this, there's also a sense of peace of, you know what, even if I don't get X, Y, Z, W, I'm actually perfectly fine, but I'm going to continue this exercise because why not? And it's kind of fun. And I still like the idea of this house. or I still like the idea of being fit. So I'm going to continue and embody and live this person. And then as you transform and as you start to see the results in your life, you think, hey, this is kind of cool. But it's no longer from this place of desperation and clinging. And I know I've seen in myself, in my life, in my business, each time it's been clinging and from a place of lack. Not only has it not worked, <laughs> but also. <laughs> feel terrible because the whole time you just feel you're not where you want to be and mm. every time it has worked or I have manifested or been able to produce the results that I was looking for it came from this place of I'm already whole everything is already done I already mm. feel peace and abundant this would just be a nice bonus but I don't need it and that just changes the whole dynamic absolutely I, I couldn't agree more and I think one of the ways that I love the explanation is from Abraham Hicks or Esther Hicks. I was at one of her seminars in Amsterdam back in spring. I love the way she explains it. And it's exactly what you were saying, Katie, in the sense that if we're coming from where we're at now, it's I don't have it. And as you say, the desperation is almost affirming to the universe. It's not here yet. And I think the whole point is we need to enjoy the journey. And it's actually never about the destination. Um, what is it so the way she explains it is if 
So let's imagine, let's take an example. Let's say a coffee where someone goes out today and thinks, okay, I'm going to manifest a coffee or a parking spot. I think the reason why the smaller things are so easy to manifest is because it's not life changing whether we receive it or not. The burning desire is there. So we, it, it comes into our mind of it's so easy to manifest a parking spot or I do love it when I you know, receive a free coffee and then it shows up. But the bigger things, such as the house, the perfect partner, because we know it is life changing. And she always says that usually we want something. There's a goal that we have in mind because we believe we're going to feel better in the having of it. We believe we're going to feel better in the having of it. But if we're not feeling good now, we can't ever manifest what we want if we're not feeling good. And she always says, feeling is the secret. That was Neville Goddard as well. So I think the whole point, the desire's there. We pinpoint what we want. We get excited about it. And then I think we come from the inspired action, not forced action, and then letting it go. So some of my best manifestations, I think, really have been when you let it go and almost I'm not saying forget about it and do nothing put, and put your feet up, but take any inspired action and just feel choose to feel good. Choose that it's here already. Um, and like you said, then it's not it's not coming from a lack limitation. I need it. Desperation. Um, we have to feel good. Be in the what can I feel good today about? Even if you're people are, you know, people watching this, they might be in a job that they don't enjoy and they're looking for something else. When if you hand your notice in and at the minute you're not feeling good and you hate your job or the people, that's coming from a negative emotion. So you're just going to, I believe, manifest something that's the same. Rather, what can you find in your job today that you can appreciate? It could be as simple as, I actually really enjoy the people that I spend time with at work or actually I do get to learn something new every week but find the good even if it's small and then when you get the urge I think if if people were to hand in their notice that I think that is when when the feeling is high that's when something bigger and better will come along and it's also interesting that even if we weren't to achieve this big goal you're still feeling more fulfilled. So either way, it's worth doing. Either way, it's worth practicing and cultivating, being in a higher state, being in higher energy, feeling gratitude, focusing on what we have in our life that's abundant. And from that place, we generally do attract big and better things. And it makes total sense. Even if you think about a business deal, if you show up for a potential partnership and you're feeling excited and happy and grateful, it's a lot more likely to happen. It just it's pure psychology, logic, people, relationships, communication, and you feel better anyway. So it's sort of a, a win-win. And one mm -hmm. of Tony Robbins' quotes that, that, that I love is, at any given moment, what's wrong is available, but so is what's right. And this quote I have used over and over and over and over again, each time I find myself focusing on what's wrong. And it can be the smallest, minute thing. Maybe you're not super happy with that meal or maybe that conversation didn't go as you wanted or maybe the flight is a bit delayed. So that's what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But then I think the quote, I think, but what's going right right now? I think, well, I'm still alive. That's pretty good. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of other things. But on the moment, because our brain is wired to focus on the problem, mm -hmm. this and it's amplified. But if you ask yourself, well, what is going right right now what is something i'm grateful for at this mm -hmm. moment suddenly your whole mind pivots from this problem mm -hmm. and you start to see all the other good things and that doesn't mean that if you have specific problems in your business and your life that you should just be an ostrich and ignore them <laughs> <laughs> if you're able to cultivate that extra sense of gratitude and playfulness that you can then readdress them but coming from a different place and i really think this is the key manifestation is one way of looking at it leading a fulfilled life is another perspective being in the right state to achieve your goal but i really feel that the key is to be able to maintain a higher level of presence mm -hmm. a higher level of consciousness so that when you go about your life and your business you're able to better respond mm -hmm. to circumstances i know that echo toll talks about 
being reactive to circumstances. And that's when you're obviously in a lower state and more on autopilot response and mm -hmm. responding to circumstances. Again, going back with the idea of responsibility. Absolutely. And what a fantastic man he is. He was actually in London last year. My friend and I went and my notes, I couldn't keep up. It was just uh, incredible. So many insights. He has a great book as well, The Power of Now. I don't know if anyone's read this, uh, but I, yeah, highly recommend it. And I think, again, it's all about being present and enjoying the moment right now, not worrying about past things we can't change, not worrying about future things that haven't happened yet. And I think the percentage of uh, there was a survey done and it's the amount of things we worry about in the future that are actually never going to happen is so huge it was something like eight percent of our problems that are actually you know a, a problem that need addressing <laughs> it's just incredible yes i also saw i got told in stockholm i also took loads of notes one <laughs> of the things that i really remember is this idea that when we have an obstacle or a problem in our life on the moment when we're suddenly confronted with this our automatic response is to become less conscious. Our automatic response is to get defensive or prickly or upset mm -hmm. or emotional or reactive. And the, if we learn to use those obstacles to grow, then we get to a higher level of consciousness through the obstacles. And I always think about this because each time something happens, that's quite vague, but there's a lot of <laughs> some things in life, it's true automatically you go from i was feeling on top of the world everything was good and now i'm demoralized discouraged annoyed upset disappointed and if we're able to notice this shift if we're able to realize that we're getting discouraged and upset and we catch it and we can sort of hold this emotion with presence then we sort of go go through the other end and go back up but obviously we don't succeed all the time and that's sort of the point to practice trial and error uh, and go through it but i really remember this idea that the obstacle makes us uh, more unconscious on the moment and also that it's okay it's normal to have emotions on the moment to be disappointed or discouraged for five seconds yes. or once or twice is it's lasting you know five months uh, mm -hmm. i think that's more the core idea I love that concept. And that's the thing, isn't it? It's just being aware of them, being able to switch as quickly as you can away from it. And I think also, um, I don't know if this was Earl Nightingale again, but there was a, he used to say, look, if anything comes up, a hurdle, a challenge, a problem, always say, no matter how bad you feel it is in the moment, just say that's good. What is the good that's come from this? Last week, my car battery died. And initially human response, I thought, ah, oh, this is just really inconvenient. I've got so much to do today. And in the end, I thought, okay, what's good about this? And I thought, this is a blessing. I could be two hours away from my house. Luckily, it happened on the driveway. Thank you, universe. I'm about to sell the car. So I would hate for the next person that I'm selling my car to to have a, a, you know, a car that I've just purchased and then the battery dies in them. That would make me feel good. So it's trying to find the good in everything as well. And like you say, I think with challenges, if you can have the perception of welcoming them, welcoming them in, because that's how we grow that's how we learn so rather than thinking oh gosh this is a huge problem and it's this is awful it's too much i think oh this is this is good bring me more problems because we well, don't let the universe hear that but you know problems are great because i'm learning i'm going to be a new person after i resolve this problem or challenge yes that's how we grow <laughs> We have to keep it in mind in the hardest moments, uh, but there's a way through to the other side. And that's also how we build resilience. There's a lot of talk about resilience at the moment, but resilience doesn't happen unless you go through challenges. So it's sort of the price to pay that is how you navigate them and manage them. Leanne, we're already approaching the last few minutes. What would you like to leave the audience with? What would be a tool, a technique, maybe a small strategy that they could start to implement to really see how their thoughts and emotions create their life around them? Mm -hmm. I would say perhaps, and this is a fun thing to do, just do a manifestation journal, okay? And just, I always think life, play life like it's a game. Start with small things, whether it's a coffee, a flower, it could be you want to manifest a compliment for the day. It could be anything, but write it down. 
go out and have fun <laughs> be in the energy and the feeling that it's already happened or it's it is happening right now and then just let it go and just go about your day and just see what happens even if it's that you feel every time you're out driving the traffic lights go red have in mind i'm so grateful that they're always green and life gets to be easy even if you don't fully believe it but start with small things anything and everything you manifest write it down in a journal or, or I tell some of my clients write it on a little sticky tab pop it in a jar and I'm telling you at the end of the year on the 31st of December it's so fun to open them all up and just start reading them and it's it goes to show how powerful we really are we're creators so go after what you want doesn't matter how big or small yeah just just keep at it Wonderful. Thank you so much, Leanne. So much wisdom in all of this and so much joy, uh, magic and how we can create, be the creators of our life. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks, Katie.